Hello and welcome to Sensei Podcast. This is Manos Brilakis discussing with leaders in the field of CTO and Complex PCI. Sensei means teacher or master in Japanese. The goal of the Sensei Podcast is to help you learn and improve in CTO and Complex PCI so that you can become the best that you can be and offer your patients the best possible results. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Sensei Podcast. It is my great pleasure to introduce Dr. Kambis Masayeki from LARD in Germany, where he heads the cath lab. And uh, he's, uh, as you many of you know, one of the fathers of CTOPCI in Europe and a tremendous operator doing some impossible cases possible. So again, uh, thanks very much for joining us today, Kambis. Hello, Manus. Yeah, thanks a lot uh, for having me. Well, it's a pleasure. And I always want to start this by asking people to tell us your story. How did this happen for you? How did you, when you decided to become a complex operator, CTO operator, and how was the learning for you? Sure. So, Manus, in 2009, actually, I started to overtake a calf lab. So I become very young, a head of a, of a calf lab. And, uh, well, what I realized that these days were that uh, basically, um, I had the impression in terms of symptom release, the surgeon were better than us. And, uh, and uh, so, and, and, and what I realized is that uh, when they did a revask, they did a complete revask, including chronic total occlusions. And at this time, 2009, 10, so what I often see is that people came with an occluded RCA, but the diagonal had an instant restenosis. So we were always thinking, well, maybe it's the diagonal, right? Because, uh, Chronic total occlusion should not uh, have angina and, uh, and, and and not dyspnea at this time. So uh, some kind of, uh, let's say, um, yeah, we, we just uh, wanted to have the easiest way for treating patients, but we failed. So at this point, I started to try to open this uh, chronic total occlusions. And uh, and uh, once I was successful, I, I well, it was the symptom patients relief. So I, I found the answer. Uh, for let's say for for my patients in in treating uh, uh, cr- uh, chronic total occlusions uh, in terms of symptom relief and uh, that was how the story began and then it was the early days of CTOPCI still the techniques were maturing how did you go for learning this did you work with people did you go to courses how did you actually learn how to do these complex procedures yeah so um, actually, I started uh, in 2010 to focus more and more, so already 12, 13 years ago, to focus more and more on these uh, chronic occlusions. I remember in uh, end of 2010, beginning 2011, we got the Corsair. And uh, also then, uh, very fast, the Sion Black came. So when I started with uh, CTOPCI, um, the, <laughs> let's say, uh, there was like um, in the Euro CTO club already the opinion you should do 300 anti-grade cases before going red to grade. So that was a little bit different when I started because we had the materials out there. So uh, when I failed anti-grade, so I, I, I already went retrograde over the septal connections. And so I, I learned very fast with retrograde approach. Let's put it in this way. And then I had my retrograde marker wires, and I started to 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 to, uh, uh, to yeah to do a kissing wire and things like that. So that was the technical approach. So uh, at this time, uh, it was difficult to access media like this and also uh, online media. You, you could find it at some places, but it was difficult. But uh, I remember many many uh, uh, years. Well, when, uh, during my wife was reading, I was looking on the computer and uh, uh, also at, at night before we went to bed. And I was I was just uh, focusing on on finding videos. So I studied people uh, in the first row, like um, like like George Cianos and uh, um, as well uh, Freddie Galassi. And they were the first videos coming out 2009, 10, 11, where we saw also Gerald Werner and then all for sure Bill Lombardi. And, and when we saw uh, also Japanese operators at this time, and uh, so and and I was I was really studying them a lot. So I I I watched them all. I I, I could read actually their um, kind of drawing when they were doing cases. I even for me at this time I even didn't. It was not important to see the operator because I know from the style who is going to operate. So I studied them a lot. So, and uh, finally, um, I remember in 2011-12, uh, there was a meeting, uh, a very small meeting 
in um, Munich. And uh, at this time, Sherald Werner was uh, the head of the EuroCTO club. He was the, in the meeting. And there were some live cases, and he also did a live case. Arpin Büttner did a live case, and there was a guy who should uh, give a talk about CTO cases. And he said, well, Kambis, I have some cases here, but those cases are those cases you proctored us uh, uh, three, four weeks ago. So because I don't have uh, my own cases, I only have the cases that you proctored us. So please go on stage and give the talk. So I was not prepared for that. So I went to my car, I picked up my laptop, I said, well, if I have the chance to speak from an auditorium, I will take the true cases which I have on my laptop. And then I showed some uh, ipsilateral stuff over epicardial, diagonal, LED recognition. And, um, well, Gerald was, was uh, looking at this and he said, well, you know, uh, what you're doing here is almost on a very, very good level. So uh, would you like to join the EuroCTO club? And, uh, well, that was how the story began. And I said, well, uh, I, I, I was your CTO at this time. For me, there was all like the super masters. It was a very small group, probably 20, 25 operators in Europe. All were, had big positions in the, in the, in the biggest centers. And I was, um, let's say, something like, well, um, yeah, 32, 33. And was a, I, I was like, a, yeah, I was amazed uh, by, by the chance. And then I said, well, Cheryl, uh, if you really offer me, you should see me working live. So um, if I'm going to, um, to do a meeting like that, like you have, like we are now in my institution, would you come and join me and do a case there? And he said, yes, I will come. So what I did, I, I made my own meeting and I did my first live case 2012 or 13, I, I think 13. And, uh, and, and yeah, and, and, and Gerald joined. And actually, it was an interesting guy. He was a dentist, 89 years old, and we had the coronary 20 years ago. It was similar 20 years uh, later. It was occluded right, a subtotal circ, and the LED with a 50% stenosis prox. And this, the guy, he, he, he was almost okay with his symptoms, but then a progression of symptoms, like we often have it, right? We cannot see the difference in angiogram. And... And then we decided to open this ride. It was red grade with a complex reverse card. And finally, uh, we managed it. Well, and yeah, and that was how, yeah, how, how I got access to the registry, how I could implement data to the registry. And I also then, uh, from this time, I also learned to understand that I have to watch about what I'm doing. And I have also my own statistic, which was very important for me. Because at this time, we, we didn't have so many data. So we had to look at what we are doing. How are our, our complications rates? How is the renal function uh, is going to change? How are our complications rates? Are we har harming patients or are we really helping them? So, and, and that was, uh, yeah, I think it was a very, very interesting time, fantastic time. And a lot of proctoring then. Afterwards, and I remember this time when you did a retrograde procedure and you did a final shot, everybody was uh, like uh, uh, giving a big applause in the cath lab. So it was uh, really uh, enjoyable times. <laughs> but so, so Kavis, but clearly that is amazing techniques, and already you still amaze people with the way you go through retrograde with some collaterals people don't want to touch. But how did you actually learn how to tackle those? Because even today, as you know, many people are very, very. Um, concerned and very hesitant to tackle these very complex collaterals. It was a trial and error or some things that you could see that uh, helped you do this, a lot of practice, obviously. What, what was it that hel helped you learn how to do this? Um, yeah, sure. I mean, <clears throat> uh, first of all, what I understood is whenever I go retro um, and, and uh, I, have to, I have to do it in a different mode and I... So at the very beginning, when I started with retrograde approach, I learned that I can make a big mistakes as well, and I can destroy septals. Septals. That was the first thing. So once I decided to go from antigrade retrograde at these times, I slowed down myself. I took a deep breath. I started to not mediate, meditate, but in a way, cool down, and then go very, very, very slowly. And in a way that what I learned is that I have to um, stop immediately when I feel resistance. So especially with the polymer checkered wires, right? So the, the Sion Black. The Sion Black can be fantastic, but you have to, to stop immediately because if there is resistance, the wire boggles and uh, create a knuckle and then you have a perf, right? And this can also happen to epicardial. So after finding out the, uh, this technique and uh, 
and getting a good feeling on the sea on black, I, I, I learned to work with a no talker because that gives me more feeling when the wire um, goes against uh, some uh, uh, resistance. So I could better feel it, right? And then I, I understood the scepter surfing. So this is how I started. But for sure, at this point, uh, sometimes you failed um, uh, uh, septal-wise, and we didn't have too many access to ADR. So uh, because of device uh, costs and, and, and also uh, res a little bit it was restricted in Germany, uh, in, we were not so involved in the scene. It was more, more the UK, US scene, so we didn't have access too much. And uh, at this time, well, we had to find the solutions. And, 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 and the solution was sometimes uh, only a retrograde over epicardial. So, and uh, then, <clears throat> for sure, you, we, we started, uh, or I started very, very carefully. And, and the first thing, what I un understood during my learning period is that you have to understand different as the septal connection, but you have really to understand the whole connection, which means, you know, you see this Japanese operator always doing deep injections <clears throat> in the, let's say, in the septal connections, <clears throat> but it's very important in the epicardial. So first of all, understand every band in different projections. So I do sometimes multiple uh, um, uh, injections in different, and I have to make my roadmap here and, uh, and, and to understand also and sometimes change angle of view. The next thing is that uh, I, I understood that if I push in a way the wire against resistance, I might perf. I have a perf. So this is not good. So then you have to learn also how to fix this problem, which brings us to the point that we learned that we use coils and that's the best way to do. So that was also very important. And the next thing is um, actually what, what I learned is that whenever you have a wire perf, it's not so big problem, but when your microcadido follows, it's a big disaster. So therefore, uh, keep away the distance between wire and microcatheter. So sure, it was a step stepwise approach, and uh, um, and and I understood that rotation is better than pushing. And when you see the wire just uh, w is going forward, maybe you can give a little tiny, let's say, push, but very 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 slow, and then the wire will jump. Um, so it's a combination of of, of multiple things, uh, probably, uh, which is sometimes difficult to explain. So that came up, and that was actually the problem that on a certain point that we had the registry data and we saw, well, that might cause big problems in terms of perforations and uh, people were afraid. And uh, and then there was also like a polarization between people who went retrograde with epicardials and others who said ADR. So... You know, uh, taking all together, I think uh, whatever we do, uh, we should know what we do and, w and, and we should know what is the solution uh, if we make a mistake and or if something happens, uh, even if you don't do it by intention, it just happens, right? You have this tiny 1.5% one, one, 1. probably in, uh, in CTO PCI where something can happen, which you, well, which just happens, right? But you have to have a solution. In terms of epicardial, I think nobody should die nowadays uh, on epicardial perf because you should have your your bailout scenarios and um, and and this this nowadays we know what to do and the same you should have with with a, a, a wire or a cross post exit you should have a bailout scenario and this is mo more important but it's a stepwise approach you cannot start directly by that and um, and and yeah and and another part was for sure uh, also this ipsilateral thing which I started on the right especially because I understood that sometimes uh, uh, there's, even in, especially in post-cabbage patient, we have only the uh, Lima LED connection for retro approach. So, and there I, I, I saw that the risk is much lower to go Ipsy right to right, uh, then go and creating some spasm. At this time, we didn't have impeller support, you know? And, um, and so that, that was also a way where we, where we could find a solution for, for some patients, right? Perfect. So, okay, clearly, you know, you, you mastered the area early. It looks like you worked hard on it and, um, you know, gradually did more and more. Yeah. But do you, after all these cases you've done and all the experience you have now, how are you feeling now when you do this case? Are you stressed out? Are you anxious? Are you pretty relaxed when you do these cases or any complexity of case? Um, well, that's a um, good question. So, um Honestly, I remember uh, that I almost prepared a lot uh, up from the lives and the cases, the complex cases, um, especially in the past. 
I was, um, you know, also before I went to bed, I, I went multiple times through the case uh, at this time when I was not sure if I can do the case. So that was a lot of, uh, uh, tr um, let's say, mental work. But when I came to this huge center uh, where I was working five, six years, where we had five, six hundred cases, I was thrown into so many cases every day, you know. What I learned is that I, I, I really uh, it brings me to a completely different level so that I can just jump in in every case nowadays, right? So that was a fantastic experience uh, uh, having done like uh, uh, 2,000 cases in five years. It was crazy. So, and, 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 so, and I, because sometimes in this center we had three retrograde cases and people just called me and I was jumping around. But uh, uh, nevertheless, um, if you if, if if you have a complex case, you should have a good strategy. You should have a good strategy. You should talk with your team, and um, whenever you are well prepared, nothing will happen. And if you don't prepare, the problem begins. So that's 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 the first thing. If you have a complex case, um, it it helps a lot. But it's not on, only the answer. It's also the relation to the patient. So you have to talk to the patient. So that gives you. In a, at least me, um, um, more force for, and power for the case. Uh, and this is very important because on a certain point, the case may turn in a very, very difficult scenario. And then it's more about the patient, the relation to the patient, yourself, and this connection. For me, it's very important. And that can bring me sometimes even to another level. And sometimes I can make things that I even didn't think that I'm able to do. So, um, uh, on a certain level of when you understand that you are not able to get better manually, the only way to get better is in your brain. And here, the important thing is definitely the mental force. And I'm a strong believer about, about if, you're a if you're healthy mentally, that you're a better operator. And how do you actually keep that mental force? I know you are a big runner and you like to some but how do you keep uh, you know your your brain and your mental capacities good? Yeah, I mean first of all you, you you have to I mean if you love what you're doing it's a good thing, right? So so that's that's the first good thing because then even a lot of work can be sometimes easy, right? But but nevertheless, repetition of repetition of repetition uh, uh, makes sometimes all the days hard, or in a way, I mean, clear. But so, so I mean, did that what we have uh, uh, in our scene, that we're traveling around, that we meet people, that we have our interaction, and as well that we're working our labs, this is a nice mixture. It's a very nice mixture and and um, and and uh, to to just um, to improve in a way and um, I, I think to sharing knowledge on the congress is to see other people working and that also gives you a little bit more energy for yourself uh, if you come come home uh, back to home to to your to your uh, uh, to, uh, to, to your calf lab but then i think sport is important um, whenever, let's say you, you, you have, um, sometimes a long, a long, a long day, probably also a long night, you have a social event and, and you, you keep on speaking with people. And then the next day you have to, let's say you have to, to work or you have to, 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 to give a talk or whatever. I, I think it's good to have a run in the morning. So for me, it's uh, very, very good. Uh, and, and, um, and um, yeah, we also did it uh, uh, a couple of times, and it's 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 a very good thing, and gives you yeah relax your body, your brain, and everything. So, especially I think that's a good thing. Uh, uh, the combination of sport for sure, I, as well. I mean, everything around you, family, everything should be healthy, that you don't have big problems in your head for these kind of things. And um, yeah, and and I, I think that's it. But and uh, and one secret probably is that. And that, uh, actually, I asked to um, some years ago to Klaus Reifert. Klaus Reifert, I don't know if you know, but in these times with, um, um, in 1996, 98, he had the biggest private PCI center in the world with 6,000 PCIs in Frankfurt. It was private, right? And at this time, Osamu Kato came to him for two years and worked there with him. And they uh, invented the parallel wire technique at this time. Yeah, it was also the, around the stand era, so where the pre-stand and stand era. So I asked Klaus, uh, so three, four years ago, I asked him, Klaus, who is the best operator in your opinion? What you have seen? You have seen all of them, right? And he was thinking, 
two, three minutes and he said, I think Kato, what I, what he has said, what, what we, who is, and I said, why, why, why Kato? And then he was thinking another one and a half minute or two, it was silent. It was, I think because he has the biggest mental force. <laughs> and that was interesting for me because I also focused on, on mental energy during cases, during complex cases, during, you know, um, and, and um, I, I realized, and I also, I mean, if you also look at tennis players, right? Why are, why, why if they are playing the f fifth set, uh, the one is winning and, and is always winning, right? And the other not, even if they are playing completely the similar, similar game and they are playing on the same level. And I think really it's the mental capacity. And and um, at this time they had to prove it because at this time it was not clear that we are able to do it. And they were sometimes eight hours, eight hours in a case. And um, yeah, so so uh, this is nowadays uh, nobody's doing that anymore. But um, and then I understood uh, as well, and then I focused more and more on 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 that uh, point. And uh, this is also how I teach my uh, my fellows. I I always say say them so. And and if I see a fellow working, or if I train somebody in CTOPCI, and if I see at this critical point he gets in rush. And, um, and then I say, no, 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 stop. You have to slow down, step back, go and the, uh, you have to go to the meta, meta phase. And, 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 you know, sometimes like timeouts are also good, right? Uh, reflect what is going on here. It's not a computer game with you and, and your antigrade retrograde gear. There's a patient there. And still reflect if it's, everything is still okay. If you stop now, nothing is happening. But if you go further, probably now you will have a disaster or change your strategy or relax and try it again. So this is very, very important that we also train our younger generation in terms of, 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 yeah, of mental strength during these long, complex procedures. So I'm a strong believer in that. And you have a long history of training. You know, many people who know together, you know, Peter Tidy, you've trained as well. Uh, when you choose someone to train for CTO PCR complex PCI, how do you choose them? Is there a specific criteria? Is it how they behave? Is it what they've done? H how do you go from saying, okay, I will train you? Yeah, uh, I mean, what I, 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 immediately, I immediately realize if somebody is always coming to the table and he's persisting and persisting and persisting and even if he's only assisting, he just wants to learn. And then there are others who say, well, it's nice, but uh, yeah, there's also something in the hybrid room and, uh, uh, and, and I, I will, I will, I'll come back, but they never come back, right? So, so, uh, and, and uh, so, you know, and, and the, the, you, you see immediately the guy who, who is going to be the, the CTO operator. So I think so. So, and, and also during the proctorings, uh, uh, when I, w sometimes I went to centers where I, I realized that, well, on a certain point I was standing alone at the table and those who were inviting me, they were already gone or something like that. So, <laughs> and, and then I said, well, probably doesn't make sense to come back to the center again. Right. Uh, and, 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 but, uh, there are others and, and you immediately realized them. So first of all, they have to have a lot of interest in that, what they're doing. They have to have the knowledge. I want to see them also on the concrete congresses running around. Uh, to be interested, to engage in the community. It's possible. It's not difficult. We are all open-minded. We are happy if people ask us questions and if we can share. And, and, and yeah, and th this is how it works. And, and then finally, they will end up, uh, on a, on a, on a, they will end up some, someday doing the same job that we have, are doing, right? Yeah, no, absolutely. You're right. So enthusiasm is a big part. D does it matter to you how skilled they are in terms of their capacity to get the wires when you first start with them or that's secondary so i i i've seen i've seen both i i as a as a proctor uh, um i i even went to centers where i had much more experienced interventionists like myself right because they were already 20 years on the table or 25 years and uh, and uh, and me not right but still i i i could teach them something but i learned also a lot of them so but i also Train somebody who is now an excellent operator who started with CTO PCI, because he was always going with, in the, in, in, with me on the table, always assisting me, always assisting me on a, on, a, on, a, on a certain day. I said, put the guides in. He put the guides in. Then I said, well, you can already start. Or I, I now I, I show you how how you handle a field, right? He can do nothing, so nothing will destroy. Just and he and then I showed him how to. 
people the question how to rotate the microcatheter and how to control the wire tip. And then it's, and I see, oh, okay, it's learning very fast because you've seen it 100 times. And the next day I came, I said, you can already start. It's an easy case. And, uh, and, and maybe uh, you can start with the fielder. We discuss the case and call me uh, at this point. And, uh, well, and then he called me, said the wire passed. Huh? And, and this is how, how, so it's not always, I mean, it's easier to train somebody who is already advanced operator. Um, but I think it's good to start as early as possible. <laughs> so the ideal, the ideal time to start to train somebody would be between tw 10 and 12 years. <laughs> You know, but for sure, I mean, it's not only the, the handling, it's medicine, the, but in terms of training, I think it's perfect. Because, you know, the difference was why uh, probably we had it even on me easier than the generation before us. You know, I'm already, I already played uh, uh, on, on the computer Commodore all the time, right? With 10, 12. So I already have the understanding of watching hours, uh, a video game and reacting on that. So, you know, and, and the generation after us is even more. So, so now w once we see an angiogram for hours, for me, it was not, uh, I was not tired. Okay. And, and um, so, and I think then there are some other things that might help you. If you are a musician, for example, I was playing piano many years. So that can also help a little bit to uh, get an information and transfer it to your uh, brain and then react with your fingers. So I think that is also helpful. So uh, this combination, for example, uh, helps a lot uh, to to then to be a good good operator in a way. So yeah, so there are, there are, there are multiple circumstances. Uh, uh, um, also, why somebody might have a talent uh, uh, in a way or not. Yeah. And then, what do you think is the hardest thing to learn in CTO PCI? Is it the wire? Is it the microcatheter? Is it the coordination of the hands and the eye? Is it the mental thing? What do you think is the hardest thing for people to, to teach and to learn? 100% for me to fail. The hardest thing is that you have to learn to fail. Um, because if you're not learning that, you will harm. And this is something between you and your patient. It's not about you and that you are able to do the case and you are happy and going out with your ego and everything is good, angiogram is perfect, but the patient's dead. You know what I mean? So this is the first thing that you have to learn. It's the hardest thing because, uh, um, let's say, to become an interventional cardiologist already, this is a special subtype of people and they are all super motivated and uh, very ambitious. And, 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 but they actually, they did not learn to fail. Right, because we were always the best, right? In all the in, in school, at the, yeah, and 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 so, a lot of us, right? And and it's a like a, and and at a certain point, you, you have to learn that you you have to fail, and this is making you stronger if you understand that. So, um, put it in this way: if somebody's saying during a live case and is a let's say super great uh, operator, everybody knows it. That on this point, I stop because uh, it turns into probably an adverse event for the patient. This is something very, very interesting where we should look in why he's saying that at this point. And then we can learn a lot. So I think nowadays we cannot improve in terms of uh, um, at the moment of strategy and, and, and um, uh, let's say those who are already on a very, very good level. I, I think you cannot improve in terms of material and strategy at the moment. You can improve in reducing complication rates and therefore you have sometimes to stop a case. It's, it's simple and, and that you say, okay, um, and, and, and that sometimes maybe uh, um, is also the, let's say, the bailout scenario where the U.S. Uh, is now coming with the um, investment procedures, right? That you even can do probably something um, and, and, so, and, and bring the patient back and maybe you had some plaque modification or proximal cap. It helps you for the next case to, to have even, even a, a yeah, more easier scenario. So, so I think this is something, especially what I had to learn and where I made mistakes in the past when I was younger and um, where I'm now, I think, professional now and, and, and learned that, uh, and that those failures made me stronger. And, uh, and, um, and, and now I, I think I, I also understand when I see others uh, uh, that, they, that they should stop or, or even should not begin. <laughs> 
Yeah, no, absolutely. That's a great you say. It's a tough one in terms of the ego and the. But at the same time, you're right. It's good to have better to have a failure without a complication than a com- success with a complication. So sometimes you have to yeah. balance things out. Do you use a CT much, coronary CT, for planning your procedures, or you mainly based your planning on the angiogram at this point? Yeah. So um, honestly, I in my my daily practice not. I, I just uh, do the cases. But whenever I have access to CT, I love to read it. Um, what we're getting more and more is probably based on ischemia trial that patients are put in CD and they even don't get an angio and they just say, well, I have a CTO and the LED stenosis, please treat me. So this is getting more and more and more. So, and then you, you understand that you have to learn uh, more and, and read the CT. So I'm looking, I'm looking at, at the CT and then it depends as well a little bit on the quality of the CT for sure. There are, there, there are a lot of different qualities. But when you have a co-registration, it's very nice to have. And, and uh, especially, uh, especially the calcium, actually, and also ambiguous cap, it can really be an advantage, I think, um, to have a CT scan. It's not absolutely mandatory. But whenever you have it, I think it's a, it's a big uh, advantage, even for reentry, right? To see, um, do I have a superficial calcium? Where is my reentry zone? I think at this point, I think there we can still improve and learn and produce more data to understand better. Sure. Yeah. And Cambis, what you've done so many things. You've uh, you know amazing techniques, and I know you're learning some structural too. But what excites you the most at this time? <laughs> uh, in terms of medicine. In general, in medicine or otherwise. Ah, okay. So, so in t- well, put in two, two, days, uh, two things. Um, in, in terms of my, my uh, professional life, um, I, I took over a center now, a heart center, where I'm the head of department now. I uh, have a little bit more administrative uh, work, and, um, but uh, I have a team, and um, it's something that I can build up now. My own team and, and my own people, and I can train them. And uh, when I came to this, this heart center, um, they had a quite good level, uh, very good operators with uh, low complication rates, but the, the, that what they tackled was far away from that what I used to, just the cases that we do. So uh, I, I, we improved them a lot in plaque modification and, 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 and wrote the imaging. And uh, it was fantastic to see that a good level operator can just, I mean, in even one year, uh, improve fantastically. We have two, three guys there, and I now I have also a CTO operator uh, in my in my uh, um, team. Which even now, I think probably doing even more cases than me, but it's good, <laughs> and and uh, I, I'm okay with that. And uh, and and still, when he when 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 sometimes he, he when he calls me, and still it's always interesting scenario, and uh, so so I, I I still can can help him, and I still can learn him. So I think this is something what I enjoy now most uh, to 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 have this team to build up this team. And, and to bring those people, uh, um, yeah, in, in probably also to, to, to help them in their career in a way. And, uh, well, that I love this. And for sure, um, then I have the, the task that in my professional life, which is important for me as well, is the, 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 the congresses. Uh, uh, and, and you know that I'm, I'm very active in MLCTO, and, and it's always a great time there. But as well now... Um, at, 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 uh, at Euro PCR, uh, where, where I'm also involved in the CTO track. And, and this is probably the most interesting task then for the next three years. In, um, in, in September, I will take over after Carlo Di Mario for the Euro CTO uh, presidency. And uh, because this is a very heterogeneous yeah, congratulations. group. Yeah, thank you very much. A very heterogeneous group of uh, very interesting people uh, and, and uh, um, very strong personalities and uh, and uh, yeah, so so and but a very good traditional club, and I'm happy to do this because I can give them something or the club something back in a way, uh, 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 because this is how I entered the CTO world, and uh, I think now it's the time, uh, and and uh, and and for me, and um, I think this uh, will be a good thing. I hope so for both sides. So, and in terms of my my um, yeah my my my, my life my, my 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 private life, 
So um, yeah, uh, uh, I have a great family, and I'm happy with 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 all of them and my boys' education. But that's going probably too too far. But uh, in terms of my personal hobbies, now at the moment I'm fully in high fee, <laughs> high quality music. So and and uh, yeah, so sometimes uh, uh, probably at uh, at night when everybody's sleeping, I'm listening to very very high high quality music. I share this with uh, Masaika Yamane. He's also in that. And and uh, yeah, we enjoy it. <laughs> Perfect. So so Kambis, obviously clearly you've done many, many things so far, amazing accomplishments. But what are the things that you are the most proud of? Um, um honestly though um the most proud of are my boys and uh, yeah. Um, how they, I have a 19 year old, a 17 year old, and a 10 years old, and even if it's an interesting age and not easy, always easy, but to see that they are own personalities and all different. And um, to, to be able to have this variety in their personality and see them growing up in this way, it's very, very interesting to watch them because you don't know how the story ends, but I have a good feeling that they are happy now. Uh, and it's not easy, you know. It, it was not an easy time with the lockdowns and everything, but they're doing great. And uh, yeah, this is where I'm really proud of. And um, and well, and and in terms of my professional life, I probably reached more than I ever thought and I ever dr dreamed about it. When I came to Germany from Austria, I only wanted to be interventional cardiology, and that was my big goal, just to open vessels, but acute. You know, that was always. When I said to my wife, if I am one day in a calf lab and I am able to treat a STEMI, I, I will be the most happiest guy in the world. And and the rest was uh, just on top and it's okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, obviously very modest, but again, it's been a phenomenal impact uh, that you've had on the field. But speaking of music and films, do you have any favorite uh, uh, movie or any favorite book that you like? Yeah, sure, books. Uh, yeah. So, the, the, I mean... The time for books is not, uh, it's, it's more in the holidays and, and sometimes before I go to bed and, and I, I read, but uh, it's a little bit reduced. Uh, so I would, like, like, would probably have a little bit more time. But nevertheless, so um, I remember uh, in, in the past, I, 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 I like to read Gödel Eschabach. It's, uh, uh, yeah, it's almost about cow's theory, about uh, being and... Uh, consciousness, so yeah, chaos theory. So it was very, very. I re read that book with 25 years, and I still open it sometimes and uh, have a lot of fun. At the moment, I'm reading a book about emotional intelligence, uh, and and and, I, and 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 was was also a very good book. I wrote in the past uh, during holidays was about surrounded by idiots. Very funny, and it's about different types of of, of human being uh, like. He, this guy put his trust in four different characters, let's put it in this way. And it's more about how you can implement them in a group, that a group is working, which is important for me as well at the moment because as head of department, I, I, I also want that my group is working in a way. And you need all the different types of characters, like our bias, you know, you uh, like a computer, it's Windows, it's Linux or uh, Mac OS, but we human beings, we have the same, right? <laughs> so, so we have also our, our different types of bias, let's put it in this way. And it's very interesting how this uh, uh, psychotherapy analyzes this. Well, in terms of films, um, yeah, it's more like uh, David Lynch, Quentin Tarantino, Oliver Stone. So the old Palm Fiction, Lost Highway, I, I like it. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Well, Kambis, again, it's been amazing you know, learning from you and seeing your, your journey, which has inspired many other people. Uh, finishing up, any last comments, any pearls of wisdom, people who want to learn CTO and complex PCI, what would you tell them to do to become uh, successful? Yeah, I mean, you know, Manus, I, I think it's important to, to go to the meetings, really, because... Um, it's it's um, for sure we have a lot of lot of uh, uh, media online media now which is great which we should do uh, i think that's a great opportunity and i realize that people nowadays are learning much faster than in the past based on this uh, on this on this uh, uh, portfolio from Incalf lab wonder so everything is online now it's like super in the last three four years there was a lot of data uh, implemented in the uh, in the streaming uh, uh, platforms and 
and and it's fantastic even on euro CTO, you see a lot of lot of videos and also all those congresses and uh, and um, but beside that i think it's also interesting to be there in person to feel the atmosphere to really feel the interaction of discussion and also to share and just to ask let's say stupid questions there are no stupid questions but easy questions you know my first question i ask was uh, to Klaus Reifert at PCR 2011. I said, I came retrograde over an epicardial RCA um, LED and my microcatheter, but then I ran out of length. What can I do? And he asked me, well, how long is your, micro uh, is your guide? And I said, I don't know. And he said, well, there are 100 centimeter guides, which is usual, but then you can order 90 centimeter guides. I said, how can I order 90 centimeter guides? Yeah. So we didn't know that. I didn't know that. Yeah. And and then I ordered 90 centimeter guides from Medtronic. It took a little bit of a while, then they gave me some, and and the problem was solved. And uh, I took the patient back, and it, and you know those kind of things are are super important. Uh, so this is one. Then I think fellowship makes sense. Uh, uh, I mean, there is a long tradition in U.S. for sure. And when I look at those fellows uh, from Stefan Reinfred, from yourself, from uh, I had Peter in my lab. So how they develop in, in which uh, which way and uh, is fantastic. So I think those fellowship programs are are, are are very very important. I think it's also important to travel a little bit around, to go to different labs, to 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 make some preceptorship, to just watch also a little bit. And when you're already there and you start with your CTO program, I think it makes also sense that you also, if there are the opportunities, you bring a proctor uh, to your to your lab. And there nowadays probably there will be something um, which will be in future more and more. This will be those proctoring via yeah we are we are web now, and uh, uh, we we had some there was even I think I don't know if it's already published but uh, Ungario so their guy from Belgium he invited me for doing like an online proctoring right so you are just as a moderator you see the angio everything you're in the lab. And you give him advice how you would do the case. And he's already a city operator, but, well, uh, uh, already a good operator. But uh, uh, it was interesting because I think out of 15 cases, he solved all of them. And he had all the, the good people just trained him online. So that's also an interesting way, probably in future to do. Uh, but you, there you should already have a certain level. I mean, the best thing is that you are with a city operator on the table and watch him or even he's beside you and gives you advice. So this is the, the, the best thing, how, how you can learn. And uh, well, that all together, uh, long persistence uh, to accept failures. And, um, and yeah, and, and um, I think, yeah, it's, it's a combination. It's a long journey. It takes you some couple of years. Uh, but it will be always interesting. It's uh, always funny. It's always uh, different. And, 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 yeah, and, and I think we're at least um, almost, if there's a good selection in terms of symptoms, the patient will be happy. And that's what we want, nothing more. <laughs> Perfect. Well, again, Kambes, thank you so much. Congratulations on the many things you've done, the many people you've taught. I've learned a lot from watching your cases, reading your papers. And congratulations on becoming the president of EuroCTO as well as MLCTO, all the things you are involved in. And again, super excited to keep working with you. Thank you so much. Thanks, Manu. Thank you for listening to the Sensei Podcast. 